Welcome to New Beginnings Community Church. We're glad you're here. Uh, we're glad to be a part of this uh, service, this broadcast, sending it out to you via Facebook and whatever means uh, that you will receive it. We are delighted to share the Word of God every opportunity we have. Uh, today we will be uh, preaching from, or not preaching, but speaking from, making some comments from the Gospel of Mark, the first, second chapters. And uh, well, you can look there if you'd like. Uh, we'll start in the latter part of the uh, first uh, chapter of Mark and then move our way to the early part of chapter two of Mark and uh, hopefully bring some significant truth to bear on the circumstance that we all face right now. As we speak and as we now share with you Corona virus COVID-19 has swept even further across the world, causing more pain, more uh, suffering, more fear than we've ever had in this world. And we are here to say that Jesus is the reason that we can live without fear. I want to pray with you. And after I pray, we're going to have a song, uh, and uh, we will uh, listen to a song uh, that I think you'll love. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that you love us the way you do and that you continue to bless us in spite of who we are. We are a rebellious people and we have sinned against you and we ask your forgiveness even as we pray right now that you will bless our land, bless our people, bless our country, bless our world, the world that you made for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's hard to believe that Jesus was homeless, but he was. I know that because the Bible says so. Jesus said of himself, the foxes have holes, the birds have nests, but the Son of Man hath not a place to lay his head. Jesus was homeless. When he left Nazareth, that was his home. And he went 20 miles away to the Sea of Galilee, to the beautiful north end where he set up his headquarters and shared the gospel, the message of the kingdom with the whole world. Jesus, homeless. The God who flung the stars into space and hung the moon right where it is, slept under the stars in the light of the moon without a home. But he did have a place to stay. He stayed there with Peter, one of his chief disciples, a fisherman who had spent his life there at Bethsaida and Capernaum. The universe he had made, all the planets in all their orbits, and yet in the world he was homeless. He made the oceans. How spectacular to know that he made the oceans. Sometimes we sing about them. There's a beautiful song called Oceans. Let's listen to it. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I found you in the mystery, an ocean steep, my faith will stand. So I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When all 
emotions rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours, and you are mine. Your grace abounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you've never failed and you won't start now so i will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for i am yours and you are mine Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. My soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours, and you are mine. Welcome back. Glad to see you again, and I hope you enjoyed our uh, song. And uh, we are turning now to the scriptures, Mark chapter 1. In Mark chapter 1, after the baptism of Jesus, verse 12 of chapter 1 says, Immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness for forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with a wild beast, and the angels ministered unto him. Wow, right after Jesus comes down from Nazareth, he has been rejected in Nazareth. If you remember the story in the Gospels, they took him to the brow of the city where the brow of uh, the, the uh, city where it was built, and they were going to throw him off down a cliff, a very steep cliff, and uh, to his death. But the Bible says that Jesus walked through them, and they could not touch him; uh, that he was uh, miraculously spared. And the reason that is is because the Bible says that his time was not yet. But he didn't return to Nazareth to minister. He went east down the Roman road that led through the valley of Doves and came out at the valley of Magdal, the hometown of Mary Magdalene. The likelihood is he met her there where her family had a fish drying business that uh, was taken all over the world from caravans to uh, Africa and back to Europe and all over the world went the foods that she made with her family. Jesus probably met her there and healed her, and she came to be one of his followers. Uh, and then he went just a, just a mile across the way there, maybe a little more than a mile, uh, the way he would have walked, 
uh, and he came to the village of Capernaum. Capernaum is on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee, and it was the home of Peter. Now, Peter had first lived in Bethsaida, about five miles away to the north, but he moved with his brother Philip, and they were staying there now in the home of Peter. And you know the story of how Peter uh, was there when he called on Jesus, who had been in the synagogue, and he went right across and healed his mother-in-law, who was sick in that house. Well, that very house has been found. In the, in the uh, 1970s, uh, it was discovered by archaeologists and, and made to be uh, very obvious. And, and so you can see it now. There on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee, and that's where Jesus set up his headquarters and where the world came to him. He didn't have to go to the world. The world came to him because Capernaum was on the trade routes. And people came from Europe and they came from Syria and they came from all over the world. And they went to Africa and they came back and they went back to Europe. And all of the world came to hear Jesus preach. And it was right there on the north shores of the Sea of Galilee. Let me pray with you. God, thank you for what Jesus did, for the wisdom that God had to show us how he could take the gospel to the world by putting Jesus in the place where multitudes passed and he simply preached truth. Help us to do that in these times, to give the world hope in a time where hope is scarce, we pray in Jesus' name, amen.
says in the second chapter of Mark's gospel. And again, he entered into Capernaum. And after some days, it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing the sick of the palsy. And when they could not come into the door, they cut a hole in the roof and let the man who was sick of the palsy down through the roof into the house where Jesus was and he was healed. What a powerful, powerful image is that. That happened in Capernaum. That happened. Most scholars and myself, I believe, I'm not a scholar, but I do believe that the house is the one that has been found and excavated by archaeologists. And even to this day, you can go and look into the place where this very event happened. Jesus in the house. It was noised abroad that Jesus was in the house. And the Bible says that the place was absolutely overrun by people. People came from everywhere. They came from the Decapolis cities on the east shore of the Sea of Galilee. They came from Nazareth. They came from Magdala. They came from everywhere. They came to the house where Jesus was. Ironically, we are all now in our houses. <laughs> I'm at my house most of the time, secluded, isolated, trying to fight this virus that we have going across our world. Uh, well, the church now is different. We go back now to the status that the church had in the first century. The first century church was in the house. And as a matter of fact, it was over 200 years before it moved out of the house. It was not until the mid part of the fourth century that the church moved from that house there in Capernaum to become the church or the church of the state, the Roman Empire. And it was all over the Roman Empire. The church now had found credibility and acceptance. It had become wealthy. It had become politically powerful. What a tragic thing to happen. But now we're back where we were, where we started, A.D. 30 to A.D. 100. The church lived in the house. In the early 100s, the church lived in the house. Through the 200s, the church lived in the house. Into the 300s, the church was in the house. And now we're back there. The church no longer assembles in buildings, edifices that have been erected beautifully. It no longer comes to that place, but now the church is in the house. What a blessed opportunity for us now to be the church. We can be the church now. We can be what the church is always supposed to be and always supposed to have been. We can go out with a message to our friends and we can ask God, Lord, bless our houses. It's where your church is. I just returned from blessing a house. Now, some might say, why would you do that? Because I believe God wants me to and I believe it's scriptural. A lady called and said she wanted me to come and bless her house. So I came to bless her house. You know what? I really believe that all of us need to do the same thing. Why wouldn't we say to God, God, bless my house and those that live under my roof. Use this house as a message to the hopeless and the poor. Use my life to help them with whatever they need at this moment in time. It is time now, once again, for the church to rise up and be the church. Let's do it. Let's fight against hell. Let's fight against this coronavirus. Let's pray against it. Let's make our houses places where your spirit resides and not places where evil and sin and corruption lives. We could do that. Maybe it's the reason we are where we are. Maybe God wants us to once again 
have our churches in our houses. Let's pray for that. Father, right now I ask you to bless my home. My wife is there. My granddaughter is there. I ask you to bless my home and bless those of us who live in it. Bless me to be a, a reservoir of your truth, to make my house a place where love comes out, not criticism, where I pray for the healing of those around me, and I pray for the hope of this world. Make it happen, we pray, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We're about to have another song, and I, I want to say to you that uh, let's look again at this Gospel of Mark and move to from chapter 2 to chapter 5. In chapter 5, some powerful things take place there in the same area where Jesus was living in the house of Peter. Uh, the demoniac is healed. Uh, the the demon possessed man who, who lived across on the east shore of the Sea of uh, Galilee, he was healed and he was among the graves. And, and then also... Uh, the daughter of Jairus, a 12-year-old daughter of Jairus, who was a leader of the synagogue there in Capernaum, and he had asked for Jesus to come and heal his daughter. On the way to heal his daughter, uh, a woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment. Well, now we know the hem of his garment was, was the, uh, the tassels the, uh, uh, that had, uh, had the knots in them. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, uh, that the Jews customarily would uh, handle when they prayed, quoting the Torah, uh, those five books of Moses. And so that's what she touched. It was those powerful, uh, to the Jews, those powerful uh, edges of his uh, garment. And on the way to heal Jairus', Jairus daughter, uh, this woman touched him and she'd had an issue of blood and she was healed. All of that took place right there in that little village near the synagogue and near the home of Peter where Jesus stayed. Uh, it's powerful, you know. Here's what's powerful about it. You can't go through anything. That woman for 12 years had been suffering with an issue of blood for 12 years. She thought nobody cared, nobody knew. Uh, Jairus' daughter, Jairus' daughter, he, he, he was a leader in the synagogue, but yet now his, his little girl is sick. And you know how it is when our children are sick and how we want them to be healed. And what a powerful thing. And the demon-possessed man who was living on the east side among the tombs, he thought his life was hopeless. He didn't know anybody knew where he was. He was over there in no man's land. It was not thickly populated except for those Greco-Roman cities, 10 of them that were strewn down, called the Decapolis. And he'd come from one of them. And he was living alone. He had been put outside the city by his family. All those situations compare to what we're going through right now. Many of us feel that God doesn't hear us and he doesn't care. And he doesn't know where we are, but he does. He knows exactly where we are. He knows exactly what we're going through. And also, he knows exactly what we need. And the other thing is, he is very willing to help us with all of that and to help us get through it. He wants to rescue us if we allow him to. Let's allow God to rescue us. He's not limited by anything. He can reach to where you are. Listen as our youth choir sings, our youth ensemble, praise team. Listen to them. You are not hidden It's never been a moment You were forgotten You are not hopeless Though you have been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper Underneath your breath I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true, I will rescue you. There 
is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be your shelter. I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest. Night is true, I will rescue you. I will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest. Fight is true, I will rescue you. I hear you. Whisper underneath your breath. I hear you whisper, you have nothing left. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. Is true. I will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight. It's true, I will rescue you.